The simple truth is that most people who are looking to become self-taught programmers will not succeed, meaning that the thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that decide to pick up a Udemy course or decide to pick up some programming book and say, I'm gonna be a self-taught programmer, most of them don't succeed. There's just too many people who try to do it, too many people who dabble amongst many other problems. So what I wanted to address in this video is why most self-taught programmers fail. Like what are the big things that I'm seeing that really hold them back from actually succeeding, getting that first job and you know, riding off into the sunset and being happy. So let's dive into it. The first problem that afflicts so many self-taught programmers is what I call, are you really a programmer syndrome? So if I don't know you and I was trying to see like, who are you, what type of programmer you are, what's the first thing I would do? I would open up your GitHub page. I would open up your GitHub page and I wanna see what types of projects are they working on and have they been active? So for a lot of people, when I go to their GitHub profiles, I look at their activity and it's like a desert. There's like tumbleweeds flying around, right? Like there's nothing there. There's a few green dots in the last couple of months of the last year. And I'm like, what's going on here? Are they actually coding? Are they, is there somewhere else where they're uploading their code? I mean, that's always possible, but GitHub is where it's expected to be. I look at their projects, there's these random names. I don't know what's going on there, right? So if I'm seeing that, what does a company think? When a, co a company is gonna hire you and they're gonna look at your GitHub, they're gonna look at your projects, what are the thoughts in their head gonna be, right? So you have to think about this. Like, are you really showing that you've been committing to this? Right, like look at some other people. Some other people are self-taught programmers. You go to their GitHub, there's projects in there. Each project has a readme file that describes what's going on. It has descriptions in there. You have a personal website. Your GitHub activity looks like a Christmas tree because it's all lit up. You've been doing this for at least the last couple months. The way that I perceive the person who has lots of GitHub activity and projects is that they're not just watching tutorials. They're not just reading books. And if I think that, then a company is gonna think that as well. The biggest fear for any company is that they're gonna hire a self-taught programmer. And that self-taught programmer has just read a few books. They've just read a few tutorials. They've maybe really prepared for the job hunt process, but they ha don't have those core skills that I always talk about, that they're not ready to actually be a programmer. And that's what they really fear. So they can test you in the technical interview, they can interview you, they can you know do a bunch of things, but they do wanna see that if you're self-taught, that you have that, what I call track record, that proof that you've been doing this for a while, that you've been consistent. Because without that, it can be a little bit scary for them to actually pull the trigger and, and give you a job offer. So that's number one, is make sure that when they look at what you have to offer, that they're not asking themselves, is this person really a software developer? All right, now, before we get to the second thing, if you've liked the video so far, please make sure to hit the like button as it does me a huge favor and really helps boost this video up and share it with other people. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button as well so you get new videos from me whenever I put them out. From there, the next thing by far for self-taught software developers that they get wrong is they just have terrible job hunting strategies. When I talk to people, when they're looking to get in my mentorship program, I always ask about this and so many people are like, oh yeah, when I'm ready to apply, I'm just gonna you know, go to monster.com and throw out my application. Maybe I'll go to a few meetup.com events and you know I'm gonna network. That's a big thing that people talk about. I love that idea. I love, sure, use monster.com network, but there's so much more than just that. And if you aren't being methodical about the job hunt, if you don't have clear metrics about what you're doing, failure is highly likely, right? So a simple metric you can have is this, is you have to keep track of every single application that you fill out, every single resume that you send, sent out. You should use multiple types of resumes. You should be reaching out to recruiters and keeping track of when you last contacted them. These are simple things that most people just completely get wrong. Even beyond that, the worst mistake that you can make as a self-taught programmer is to only aim for entry-level or junior developer positions. Everybody's obsessed. They're like, where are the junior developer positions? I don't see them. Well, they're not out there because everyone's applying to them. And they're very, very competitive because there's a million self-taught software developers, people coming out of school. So you have to open up that pool that's accessible to you and reach out for jobs that maybe are asking for two or three years experience. I've recently worked with somebody who just got hired in a position that's not entry level, it's above that. And they just did it because they had the audacity to do it. They thought that they were ready for it, right? Which no one's ever gonna really feel ready, but they thought, hey, maybe I had a chance. They show up for the interview and they explain who they are, what they've been doing, and they showed and they proved to them that they could do the work and they got hired for that. So yes, definitely apply for junior developer positions, but don't be afraid to reach out above that. If a company's asking for two years experience go ahead and apply and if they say hey guess what you don't have enough experience then whatever it's you know it is what it is also beyond that too make sure to reach out directly to recruiters i see so many software developers who don't do this they're like well you know recruiters are going to ask me if i have experience yeah of course you could tell them what you've been doing say yeah i'm self-taught but here's all the projects i've been building here's all the time i've spent doing this i'm ready to go 
put me in a position to be successful. I'm gonna you know, get you your commission check or whatever it is. But if you're too afraid to do that, then that's another sort of door that you're closing on yourself. The, the pool of potential job opportunities gets even smaller. So just make sure you're being methodical. You're keeping track of every application you send out there, your AB split testing, your resume. I'll also link to a video that I have previously made about my resume and what I did to get hired. So make sure to check that out as well and it will be helpful in making your job hunt a better process than most people do as self-taught programmers. The last thing that a lot of self-taught programmers get wrong is that they're perpetually waiting to apply for jobs. Right, so they can be doing this for like six months, nine months, a year. And I, when I talk to them, they're like, you know, I'm just, I'm, I just finished my last capstone project, right? Like the, the big project they're building, but they're like, I'm gonna wait another two months for this because I'm gonna build another capstone project, or I'm gonna learn this other library, or I'm gonna learn this other programming language. And it's always like that. It's always like that for them. They just keep pushing it off, pushing it off. I've heard of people doing this for like two or three years where they were ready on year one, but they just keep pushing it off. And then their bar for entry is so high in their mind. They have to be like a senior level developer before they even apply for their first entry level job. So there's no cure for this. There's no special trick I can tell you. There's no you know mental technique that I can tell you. At the end of the day, what I'm gonna tell you is to stop procrastinating. Only you can really know if you're ready for this and hopefully you have some support around you, maybe somebody who you can talk to who's in the field who can kind of give you the thumbs up and say, you know, I think you're ready. But ultimately I'd say even go out there and start applying before you may be ready. You don't have to commit to it. You don't have to, you know, it's not like when you start applying for jobs, you're marrying to this strategy of applying for jobs. You can apply for jobs for months, get a little feedback and then go back to the drawing board. If you had an interview or two and it didn't go well, you can kind of get some feedback from the interviewer, from the company and go back to the drawing board. So I would say stop procrastinating. It's not as scary as you think. Many of you guys are deathly scared of the process and get out there and start applying. The best part about the job hunt is if you start doing it, even maybe before you're quite ready, is that you'll see that it's not that big of a deal. It's just not that big of a deal at all. Like you're not gonna have your head bitten off by an interviewer. No one's gonna make fun of you for not knowing you know, something in software development. They understand. But to get comfortable with the interview process and to lose those nerves should be your top priority. Like that should be what you should be working on. So that's really all I have to share as far as why most self-taught programmers get this wrong and they don't end up becoming programmers. So go ahead and let me know in the comments section if this helped. Also leave a like, as I mentioned before, but other than that, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and peace out guys.